you you should be able to see my screen and you have about just about four minutes to finish the warm-up unit one day one i know canvas is having issues so if you're not able to log into canvas or if it's just being uncooperative then you can finish it at a later date but just spend the next three minutes at least trying to get in and knock it out it shouldn't take you long Okay, about 30 seconds left, so just try to wrap it up if you were able to get into Canvas. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so um, first of all, welcome to class again. This is the first day of the week. It's also the first day of our first unit in the class, and we'll talk more about that. But I want to give you all an opportunity to just share out. First of all, no one has their camera on, which is a bit disappointing to me. So if you want to be a leader, you want to step out and do something different than the rest of the crowd, you can turn your camera on. Thank you, Joseph. Um, but if anybody would like to share anything, thank you, Brian, about their weekend. Um, I'd love to hear about it. I know it was probably a pretty uneventful weekend for most folks, but anybody want to share anything? I had the boringest weekend. I know. It was everybody, everybody who I've spoken to so far today has said the same thing. I think we all just needed some time to just kind of relax after that first week. There was a lot going on. You too, DeMarco, your, your weekend was boring, boring too? Nah, mine was fun. Oh, what did you do? Boy, oh boy, I went to the movies, boy. <laughs> what did you see? Nah, the movies was closed. <laughs> but I went to the mall, though. Okay. At least you got a chance to get out of the house. I know a lot of people have 
been stuck in the house for a long time now. Anybody else want to share anything? Okay, that's okay. Um, I know, you know, it's going to be interesting. It might be difficult for us to try to build a class environment, class classroom culture um, virtually, but I want you all to start getting in the habit of talking to one another, sharing with one another. Um, I didn't do much this weekend. I, I also want to get in the habit of sharing with you all what, what's going on in my life. Um, I had an opportunity to just, you know, I, as, as you all know, I'm from Chicago and my parents still live there. So I had a chance to talk with them on Sunday, which was nice. Just get an update on what's going on in their lives. Um, but for the most part, I was just relaxing. And I think after the first week of school, that was necessary because there was just so much going on. So it's always good to be able to take that opportunity to just kick back a little bit and decompress. Um, I also like to start off my weeks, and you all will get used to me doing this, with just a message of positivity. Um, so I want you all to think through whatever it is you're trying to accomplish this week, and I want you to start to establish a vision of yourself accomplishing that goal. And once you start to establish that vision, you can begin to take steps in the direction that will allow you to establish that goal. Okay, so um, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, whether it's you want to make sure that you um, get all your assignments done this week. You want to make sure that you will take a quiz this week. So maybe your 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 goal is to get an 80 or above on that quiz. Um, maybe your goal is to have a conversation with somebody that you've been meaning to have. Whatever it is, set that goal for yourself and start to tell yourself that it is achievable. Um, and I believe in the power of positive thought. So if you can think positively about something, it's the first step in you actually achieving it. It's not the only step, but it's the first step. Okay, so take some time at the beginning of every week to just think through, what am I trying to accomplish this week? And start to see yourself doing it. With that being said, I wanna point out something about our Canvas page. So give me one second to pull it up. But like I said, today is the first day of our first unit in the class. All right, so um, with that comes some slight changes. Number one, the warm up and the warm ups and exit tickets are going to be more important in this first unit now. <clears throat> but I'll share my screen. So what you should see is that instead of unit zero being the module that we're working in, now we're working in unit one. Of course, this is day one of unit one. So I've organized our modules, and you hopefully you've noticed this already. But I've organized the modules so that um, each day is separate. So we've got day one then day two, then day three, and so on and so forth. We got we have seven units this, uh, I'm sorry, seven days this unit. So our last day will be a week from tomorrow, September 1st. But in day one, you'll see that we've got a warm up and exit ticket. And we also have two assignments that we'll go ahead and knock out. All of the assignments will be due on September 1st, so next Tuesday. So for example, you log in today and your canvas is slow or it's not working or the page is just not loading correctly, you still have another eight days to get that assignment done, okay? So uh, I don't wanna punish you all by having deadlines that are gonna be preventative or that are gonna you know, be a little bit too challenging for you all to meet considering our virtual environment. So all of the deadlines are gonna be due at the end of the unit. Don't use that um, as an excuse, right? Don't wait until Monday night, next Monday night to do everything. Um, it's set up in a way so that you just do a little bit every day, 35 minutes every day, and you're in a great place going into the last day of the unit. You won't have any work to do. But if you save it all until Monday night, then it's going to feel very overwhelming. Okay, So it's designed so that if you miss one day, then you can easily recover from that. It's not designed so that you take seven days off and then you do everything on the eighth day. All right. I'll go back to the slides now. Okay, so the road to mastery starts now. Unit zero last week was just our introduction, our introductory unit. It was an opportunity for you to get to know me, for me to get to know you a little bit, for us to talk about the syllabus, um, and for us to introduce some of the basic concepts that we'll discuss in biology. But now we are in our first unit. If you remember from looking at the syllabus, we have 10 units. And each of the units is building up towards that EOC exam. And you have to pass that EOC exam in order to receive credit for your biology course. So that's what that's that's our ultimate goal. You need to get a three, four, five on the EOC. 
But we also have the goal of mastery. Does anyone know what is considered mastery? What percentage do you need to get? 80. Excellent. Yeah, you need an 80 percent to be considered to have considered mastering the topic. Um, so that's what we're pushing towards. And it starts today. So, of course, you know, we're all humans. We all have our off days. We all need days off. That's perfectly normal. But in order for us to achieve our long term goals, you need to get the you need to hit the ground running today. OK, so don't like I said, don't wake up and, and or don't go to sleep tonight feeling like you left anything on the table. Um, Make sure that you're working hard from day one, and that, that way you establish a habit of working hard, and it doesn't all feel like it's coming down on you at once. So 80% is what we're going for. And my goal as your, as your teacher is to make sure that our class average is above an 80%. And that might not happen in the first unit. It might not happen in the second unit. But I know that we will get there eventually. And your goal as a student is to make sure that your average on all assessments, formal and informal, is an 80% as well. So we're going to get there. And it's going to come through hard work, hard work and, and study skills. But we'll, I, I know in my heart that we'll get there. OK, would someone like to volunteer to read today's objective? Someone, anyone? And this is also a good time for everyone to take out a notebook or to pull up your notes on your laptop or on your phone, whatever method you're using to track information and during these presentations, now is the time to go ahead and, and get that out. <clears throat> but would someone please go ahead and read the objectives? I, I would not feel bad about calling on someone if I have to. What makes biological compound and why are they important? Okay, thank you, Justin. That was the essential question. Excellent. Um, so yeah, today we're talking about biological compounds, and we're only going to be doing a brief introduction to each of them. And over the next two days, we'll go into further detail. Um, but today, it's just going to be a brief introduction. So again, I want to just talk about the why of the objective and the essential question. We talk about these things so that we can provide an outline for our lesson. So you should be able to look at these objectives and essential questions and know what are we talking about in this lesson? What should I know? What should I be able to walk away with at the end of the lesson? And what questions might I be coming back to as the lesson goes on? So just as Joseph just said, we're thinking about what makes these biological compounds so important. So I appreciate you, Joseph, for reading. <clears throat> All right. So on most of these slides, you'll see that there are some words and sentences that are highlighted in yellow. Those are really the words that we want to focus on, and those are definitely words that you want to write down. That does not mean that those are the only words that you should be writing down. Um, but of course, we want to practice efficient and effective note taking skills, which means that I don't need to write down everything that I see, but I need to write down the words that are going to give me the most bang for my buck. What words are going to be words that I need to stick to and cling to as the year goes on? Um, so what you're seeing highlighted in yellow is just what I, as your teacher, think you should definitely write down and something that I want to speak to. But I'll, I'll give you some time to write this down, but I'll also read it out loud for you all. All living organisms require the presence of biological molecules in various forms to survive. These molecules help organisms complete the essential life processes. These molecules are either synthesized or ingested. So I'll give you about 20 seconds, 20 seconds to write down what you need to get from this slide. Okay, 
So I want to talk briefly about what we're seeing here because there is some important information. It says all living organisms require the presence of biological molecules in various forms to survive. So I know we have this very rigid idea that allows us to see things from the perspective of humans. And we see, we see life from the perspective of how life looks for humans. But we need to start to move ourselves away from that viewpoint if we're gonna be successful in biology. Because life looks like so many different versions, right? We, we could talk about animals, we could talk about plants, but we can also talk about bacteria, we can also talk about fungi. Um, and all of these things have different characteristics that allow them to do these eight essential life processes that we talked about last week. <clears throat> the biological molecules are needed to do those life processes. And they don't just come out of thin air. We need to either make them internally or we need to ingest them in the things that we eat or even in the things that we're able to <clears throat> excuse me, take in in other forms. Okay, so. I just alluded to the fact that there are eight essential life processes, and we talked about them last week. Does anybody remember the acronym that we use to describe those life processes? It's kind of an awkward word. Please make sure that you have your notes out so that you can refer back to your notes. We're thinking about that the acronym that we talked about last week that described the eight essential life processes. Five more seconds. Okay. <clears throat> so we don't remember. That's okay. I do want you all to be engaged. I do want you all to participate and um, communicate with me. So if I ever am moving too quickly or if you don't fully understand something, please come off of mute um, and, and let me know so that we can make sure we cover that information more. Um, but what I'm looking for here is Sternger. Sternger. OK, so we should have some memory of this. Please make sure that you're writing this down if you didn't get a chance to write it down last week. And if you ever miss a lesson, of course, I record the lessons and I then upload them to Canvas. So you have the opportunity to go back and look at any of the presentations that you weren't present for. <clears throat> but Sternger is just a helpful acronym that allows us to remember these eight essential life processes. The S in Sternger stands for synthesis. Can I have somebody just read what it says next to synthesis, please? The use of small things to make bigger things. Excellent. Thank you so much. And the example of that, that we really, really, really need to remember, so please write this down as well, is photosynthesis. What do we already know about photosynthesis? Does anyone know anything about photosynthesis? Uh, that's when you, isn't that when you, uh, when plants make their own food? Exactly. And I'm glad you corrected yourself because you said you, but humans don't do it. Animals don't do it. It's just plants. And they, and the thing that we need to take away from that, DeMarco, you're 100% correct is that they do it so that they can make their own food. Of course, most plants don't have the ability to consume insects or other plants. So they have to be able to make their own food internally and photosynthesis is what allows them to do that. I'm gonna push you all even further, but I know you're smart kids or smart young people, not kids, but smart young people who can handle this question. So why do we call it photosynthesis? What does the photo mean? What does that prefix photo mean? Picture. Okay, so we know that it, it 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 we also mean photos to mean pictures. Thank you, Jaden. It means um, light. Thank you. Excellent, Demarco. The the prefix photo means light. All right. So photosynthesis is possible because plants are taking in light, and and where does that light come from? The sun. Okay, the sun. Excellent. The sun. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Demarco. So plants need the sun. They rely on the sun to do synthesis to make their own food. Can someone read what it says next to the T, next to trans? The internal, wait, yeah, the internal movement of substances. Okay, the internal movement of substances. An example of that is how, how inside of our bodies we have blood. 
that allows us to transport hormones from our brains to other parts of our body, transport oxygen from our lungs to other parts of our body, um, transport waste from our stomach um, to, or nutrients from our stomach to other parts of our body. So you need some ability to move things around inside of an organism. That's essential as well. Thank you, DeMarco. I'm gonna ask somebody other than DeMarco because he is putting the team on his back right now to read excretion. What, what does it say next to excretion? The removal of non-essential nutrients and other waste. Thank you, Chelsea. And it says it, the example of that is urine removing excess sugar. So if you drink a lot of water, what does your urine typically look like? Clear. It's clear, right. But if you're drinking a lot of sugary drinks, then what does your urine look like? Yellowish, greenish. It's yellow, yeah. And maybe even sometimes green, maybe. <laughs> Um, but if you're, if you are sick and something is wrong with your body, maybe with your kidneys or your liver, then your urine could even be brown or black. All right. So, um, our body gets rid of the waste that we don't need or that we, we shouldn't have inside of our bodies by urinating and then also by defecating. Um, and thank you for reading that Chelsea. Can I have somebody read the regulation? What's, what does it say next to regulation? The maintenance the, of the, balance. Um, I'm going to ask, I, I heard several of you do it, but can I have Alyssa go ahead and say it for us? The maintenance of an internal balance. Excellent. Thank you so much. So regulation is just maintaining internal balance. Of course, we don't have control over our external env em environments, but we can control what happens inside of our bodies. So, for example, with humans, we need to sweat to cool our bodies down. Um, trees will often do the same thing. So, and plants will often do the same thing. Um, and in fact, at night, you'll sometimes see that there's dew on the, on the grass and it makes it look kind of like grayish and, and it's wet. Um, and that's the tree or that's, those are the, that's the grass, um, getting rid of excess water and also preparing itself to cool down during the day. All right. So, um, it's not just humans that do these things. It's all life forms. Can I ask somebody read what it says next to the end, <laughs> nutrition? The consumptions of vital nutrients. Excellent. So there are certain nutrients that we need to survive. Um, potassium, sodium, zinc, um, specific types of vitamins, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D. We need these vitamins and these proteins and these nutrients to survive and to promote our physical health. Um, and you need to do that. Well, humans, we do that by eating. But then there are other forms of life, like a single celled bacteria, that they don't have the opportunity to eat. So they have to do it in other ways. And we're going to talk more about that later in the unit. Can I have somebody read growth and development, please? The increase, the increase in size and form. Thank you, Makaron. So growth and development is pretty simple. It's pretty obvious. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But most forms of life get bigger, and they also get a bit more complicated as they as they mature um reproduction someone read that for us the creation of offspring and transfer of genetic material thank you joseph yeah so that that second part the transfer of genetic material is what i really want to focus on and again i'm just going to continue to remind you all throughout the lesson please make sure that you're taking notes because I don't have the opportunity to just walk by your desk and see what you're doing. Um, but I can at least remind you, you, want, you do need to be able to come back to this stuff. This is extremely important. But reproduction is mostly important because of the transfer of genetic material. All right, so yes, we're creating offspring, but we're creating offspring so that my DNA can then go on to somebody else, all right? Um, and, and all forms of life need to be able to do that too. That's how a species survives by passing on its genetic material. And then the last one, respiration. Can someone read that, please? Yeah. Fanique, DJ, Brian. Yeah. The use of energy. I'm sorry, Fanique, can you say that one more time? I cut you off. The use of oxygen and sugar to create energy. Excellent. And again, we want to think about respiration, not just as breathing, 
but really we're thinking about respiration in terms of creating energy. So what I like to think, how I like to think about this is when I'm exercising, I need to, I need to be able to breathe well. And in fact, as I start to exercise more, my breathing increases and I start breathing harder and more frequently. And the reason I'm doing that is not just to fill up my, my lungs with oxygen. I'm doing that so that I can use that oxygen to create more energy for my muscles. All right. So I need to be able to use the oxygen that I'm breathing in and then the sugar that I've, that I get from my food in order to create more energy for my muscles during that exercise. All right. And that's how we burn calories um, by creating energy. All right. So the biological molecules, which will come up on the next slide, all of them have several things in common. The first one that we'll talk about is that they all have carbon and hydrogen bonds. Carbon and hydrogen are two elements. I know most of you have not taken chemistry yet, so um, if you are a little bit confused or you haven't heard those, those terms before, you're probably not alone and that's, that's okay. But carbon and hydrogen are both elements um, that appear on the periodic table in chemistry. And these biological molecules rely on there being a bond between carbon and hydrogen. So in this example, we've got a gray ball, which represents carbon. And then we've got two red balls, which represent hydrogen. And we can see that they're bonded together. Okay, they, they cannot move away from one another. That's what we mean by a bond. They're connected. Questions about that? Okay, I'm gonna take the silence as meaning no. If you do have a question, please don't hesitate to take yourself off of mute. And this is also why it's good for you all to have your cameras on so I can see if you're, I can see your face and know if you're looking a little confused. All right, but we also like to organize organisms and the things that make up organisms from smallest to largest. So typically we start at the atom. The atom is typically considered the, the, the smallest unit of matter. You can get a little bit smaller than that. And maybe some of you have heard of protons or neutrons or electrons, um, which are smaller than atoms. But for the purposes of biology, we're just going to start at the, the atomic level, just atom. And then as we get bigger, what we're doing is grouping these things together. So a group of atoms is what we call a molecule. A group of molecules is what we call a macro molecule, meaning a big molecule. Macro is a prefix that means big. A group of macro molecules is what we call an organelle. A group of organelles is what we call a cell. A group of cells is what we call a tissue. A group of tissues is called an organ. A group of organs is called an organ system. And then if you organize several organ systems in the right way, you get an organism. Don't change it. So if we think about our human body, we have all these different organ systems. Does anybody know which organ system is shown right here on the slide? Like, uh, like a, a, a digestive? Excellent. Yeah, that is your digestive system. Thank you, Brian. And so we've got a liver here, which is its own organ. Then we've got a stomach here, which is also its own organ. We've got small intestines, those are an organ. We've got large intestines, that's an organ. And then up here, we would also have an esophagus, that's also an organ. All right, so we take all these separate organs, we put them together and they serve a specific function. And just like Brian said, that function in this case is digestion, which just means taking in food, extracting the nutrients that you need from it, and then getting rid of whatever you don't need. Anybody think of any other organ systems that we have? 
I forgot what the one for breathing was called. Yeah, there's one specifically for breathing. Does anyone know what that's called? The diaphragm or something? That's a, that's a part of that system, yeah. Lungs? That's also a part of the system. The system is called your respiratory system. That's the system that allows you to breathe. Any other systems that we're aware of? Nervous. Your nervous system. What does that allow you to do? Your brain. Which yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's your, your nervous system is what allows your brain to process. And so it allows you to move. It allows you to feel, see, hear, taste. Um, your, your nervous system is probably the most important um, system next to your cardiovascular system, which is your heart pumping in your blood. Um, so we've got all these different systems and they're all made up of different organs. Some organs are a part of multiple systems. For example, your lungs are a part of your cardiovascular system, but they're also a part of your respiratory system. <clears throat> and each organ is made up of specific types of tissues. I won't get into that too specifically, but each, each type of tissue serves a different function as well. Then we've got different types of cells. So the cells that are in your eye that allow, well, you have multiple cells in your eyes. Some of the cells allow you to process light and some of the cells allow you to process color and some of the cells allow you to process depth. So you know how far something is away from you. Just think if we had no depth perception, how dangerous the world would be. You had no idea how far or how close something was to you. Um, so we've got all these different cells and all these different tissues and all these different organs and all these different organ systems that allow us to function as we do as an entire organism, all right? So um, it's important to be able to organize them and know which one is smaller, which one is bigger. We're gonna talk, we'll, we'll quiz more on that later. But specifically, the four major classes of the biological macromolecules are right there on the screen. So this is probably the most important slide that we'll talk about in this first unit. So please, please, please make sure that you're writing this down. Um, you don't need to focus too much on this picture right here for now. We'll talk more about that in the next two days. But this information on the left side of your screen is extremely important. I'm going to stop talking for about 30 seconds to give you all an opportunity to write. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got four of these macromolecules, and you're going to hear me refer to them as macromolecules. You'll hear me refer to them as polymers. You'll hear me refer to them as biological compounds. I, they all mean the same thing, and I'm talking about these four things. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. I know that's a word that people struggle with sometimes, but You'll get used to hearing me say it and hopefully you'll, you'll practice saying it as well. But nucleic acids. So another, we talked about the fact that they have carbon and hydrogen bonds in common. But another, they also have three specific elements in common. Does anybody know what the element C is? What element has that abbreviation C? Hydrogen. Thank you, Makaran. Yeah, C is carbon. Yeah, so all of them have carbon. They also all have H. What is H? Hydrogen. H is hydrogen. And they also all have O, which is what? Oxides. Oxygen, yeah. So I just sent a message to the chat. I definitely want you to write that down. 
Okay, that's important as well. All of the compounds have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then we can see that proteins also have another type of element as well. Does anybody have any thoughts about what that N is? Nitrogen. Excellent. Nitrogen. Excellent. And then we can also see that nucleic acids have nitrogen as well, but they also have P. Does anybody have a guess as, as to what P is? This one's kind of hard. Proteins. Not proteins. I'm looking for a specific element, the element that starts with um, a P. That's phosphorus. That P is for phosphorus. All right, so I just sent it to the chat. Please make sure that you have those written down, um, not just the not just the, the element symbol, but also the element name as well. And then it's also important for us to point out that carbohydrates have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a one to two to one ratio. That means that I will always have twice as many hydrogens as I do carbons. And I will always have the exact same number of oxygens as I do carbons. So let me let me demonstrate this a little bit because this can be a little confusing. Hopefully you all can see my screen. Now keep in mind, this is just for carbohydrates. But if I have them in a one to two to one ratio, if I tell you that I have three carbons, then how many oxygens should I have? Four. Not four. Wait, could you say that again? Yeah. Thank you for speaking up and asking that question, too. So carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are in a one to two to one ratio. So what that means is that I will always have twice the number of hydrogens as I do carbon. So if I have one carbon, then I have two hydrogens. I have twice the number. And oxygen will always be the exact same number as carbons. So if I have one carbon, then I have one oxygen. All right, so if I have three carbons, then how many oxygens mm -hmm. should I have? Three. So three. three, six, three. Yeah, and I have six hydrogens. I have twice the amount. So what about if I have seven carbons? How many oxygens should I have? 14. I should have 14 hydrogens, but how many oxygens should I have? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven. If I have 10 carbons, how many oxygens should I have? 10. 10. And how many hydrogens should I have? 20. 20. Thank you. 20. All right. So, and this is keep in mind that this is just for carbohydrates. So, I'm going to type that over here too. This is just for carbohydrates. That's how you can identify what a carbohydrate is. If I see that the if I see that these three elements are present, and if I see that they exist in a one to two to one ratio, then I should know that this is a carbohydrate. And we're gonna practice with this. This is what we call a one to two to one ratio. All right, good. Any questions about that? I appreciate whoever spoke up the first time and, and said they need they needed clarification. Okay. All right. So macromolecules are long chains called polymers. Poly is a prefix that means many. Okay, so a polymer is made up of many monomers. 
the prefix mono just means one. So these monomers are the building blocks. So you'll hear me refer to monomers as subunits or as building blocks. And polymers are what they actually build. Okay. Does anyone need more time to write anything on this slide? Okay. Um, skipping this. All right. So, a good demonstration of what we're talking about is the fact that we need all four of these macromolecules to survive. And in order for us to make them, inside of our bodies, we need to eat things that come from outside of our bodies. Um, and the best chance that you have of making all four of these things in the, in the right amounts, in the amounts that you need them to be healthy, the best chance to do that is coming from eating a diverse and also a nutritious diet. Because you literally are what you eat. So the foods that you're consuming are going to contribute directly to your physical and mental health. And there's a good video that I, I'm going to show you briefly to demonstrate this. It comes from the movie Super Size. So maybe you've heard of that before, but this is about seven minutes long. So I'll share my screen here. Is fast food really that bad for you? I mean, what would happen if I ate nothing but McDonald's for 30 days straight? I knew if I was going to do this, I would need some serious medical supervision. Your blood tests are, are excellent. Total cholesterol of 168, at least superb. In terms of the salts in your blood, your kidney function, your liver function, they were all perfect. It's the first day, and uh, I'm on my way to breakfast. I got my egg McMuffin. That's going to be the first thing right there. Oh, I love Big Macs. See, this, this is probably the first time in a long time that I've actually seen a Big Mac that looks like the picture. Hello, may I help you? Yeah, could I get the uh, double quarter pounder with cheese meal? Look at that. Look at that Coke. That barely fits in there. Look how big that French fry is. That thing is like four feet tall. Double quarter pounder. That's a lot of food, man. See, now's the time of the meal when you start getting the mixed stomach ache. And now I got I got some McGas that's rocking. My sweating? arm. Are you sweating there? My arms. I feel like I got some McSweats going. My arms got the McTwitches going in here from all the sugar that's going in my body right now. I'm I'm dying. Oh god, that's so horrible this morning. It doesn't feel good at all. I'm getting this really weird feeling right in my midsection, like basically like this. Whoosh, whoosh, freaky. That is very odd. Yeah. 1339. 1339. I made it over the three day hump. You know how when you, you quit smoking? I don't know how many of you out there smoke cigarettes, but you should stop. I quit smoking and there's the, it's the three day hump. If you can make it over, those three days without smoking one cigarette, you can make it past day one, day two, day three, you make it over the hump, you're fine. Same thing with this. I made it past day three, I'm all right. In the lawsuit against them, McDonald's stated in their own defense that it's a matter of common knowledge that any processing that its foods undergo serve to make them more harmful than unprocessed foods. Originally created from old chickens that could no longer lay eggs, McNuggets are now made from chickens with unusually large breasts. 
They are stripped from the bone and ground up into a sort of chicken mash, which is then combined with all sorts of stabilizers and preservatives, pressed into familiar shapes, breaded, deep fried, freeze dried, and then shipped to a McDonald's near you. Judge Robert Sweet called them a McFrankenstein creation of various elements not utilized by the home cook. Uh, it's been a new thing is I've started to have like little some chest, not chest pains, but like pressure. You know, I feel like I got pressure on my chest. So uh, I, I figure that's probably not a good thing. I can get the uh, double quarter pounder with cheese value meal. I don't feel good today. Not that I feel sick, but um, I just feel really depressed. You know, for no reason. I mean, things are going great. I've had a good day. I just feel really, yeah. I got my chicken group. There's no chicken group. That's my cholesterol group. Protein. I got my protein group. Carbohydrates. I got my meat group. You got meat, meat, sugar, and fat. My headache's coming back again. It feels like somebody's yanking on the tendons behind my eyes. My body officially hates me. All the vitamins that you see here, vitamin E, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and so on, are all under 50% of what you need. The total cholesterol was 165 before, now it's 225. The, the liver is sick, yeah. and the most likely cause of your liver sickness is a fatty liver. My, my, my advice to you is to, is to stop doing what you're doing because it's, it's hurting you. I, uh, I woke up, couldn't breathe. I was having really difficulty breathing. I'm very hot and uh, um, felt like I was having uh, heart palpitations. Um, came up and uh, walked around the living room, just trying to get my breath back. And uh, I want to finish, but uh, don't want anything real bad to happen either. Absolutely outrageous. Okay, for the first time we're seeing uric acid elevated. So you're giving yourself hyperuricemia and the danger of hyperuricemia is gout, kidney stones. The results for your liver are uh, obscene beyond anything I would have I would have thought. Yeah. Truly. For this month, I'll have eaten as much McDonald's as most nutritionists say you're supposed to eat in eight years. Oh, man, walking up the stairs has gotten, it's starting to get really difficult. By the time I get to the top, it's really pathetic. Over the course of my McDiet, I consumed 30 pounds of sugar from their food. That's a pound a day. On top of that, I also took in 12 pounds of fat. In only 30 days of eating nothing but McDonald's, I gained 24 and a half pounds. My liver turned to fat, and my cholesterol shot up 65 points. My body fat percentage went from 11 to 18 percent, still below the national average of 22 percent for men and 30 percent for women. I nearly doubled my risk of coronary heart disease, making myself twice as likely to have heart failure. I felt depressed and exhausted most of the time. My mood swung on a dime, and I craved this food more and more when I ate it and got massive headaches when I didn't. In my final blood test, Many of my body functions showed signs of improvement, but the doctors were less than optimistic. Should people eat fast food? Uh, no, <laughs> you know, this uh, the answer is no. It certainly needs to be very restricted and balanced with overall a healthy diet. But unfortunately, you cause some major harm to your heart, your liver, your blood. I guess the big question is, who do you want to see go first? You or them? Okay, so let's just get some general thoughts on that. Does anybody want to speak to anything that kind of caught them? That's crazy. It's so body yeah. fat went up. Yeah, he uh, he gained 25 pounds. Body body fat percentage went from 11% to 18% in only 30 days. So that is not good. Why he keep eating McDonald's? You know that's plastic. Well, he was doing it as a, he did it for the documentary. So he was doing it really to kind of measure and see what would happen to his body. Mm 
Why that cholesterol? You look lucky. He could. He could have died, right? He could have, and that's what the doctors were trying to tell him that you know uh, it was really not going to be good for him if he continued it any longer. Um, and so I, it, the whole documentary is available on YouTube. If you're interested, it's called Super Size Me. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, that once he stopped after that 30th day, he did like a detox for a month um, to just try to get all of it out of his system. And he ended up basically losing the weight and feeling better. Um, but had he continued that, then it would have just gotten much worse. Any other thoughts? Yeah. I definitely recommend it to you guys. Go ahead, Joseph. Did you say? Did you ask something? He had depression because he ate too much of it. Right. Exactly. And so the 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 downfall, or really, what went wrong was that he wasn't balancing it out with other with other sources of nutrients. Um, and so you know, every once in a while, we can all our bodies are resilient enough to where we can have McDonald's, we can have Chick-fil-A, we can have Pizza Hut, whatever your preferred um, fast food is, you can do that once a week, you know? But when you're doing that every day, and then on top of that, three meals a day, it's very, very dangerous for your bodies because you're, you're just not, you're overloading your bodies with sugars and with bad fats. So there's a difference between good fats and bad fats. Um, so, yeah. You got to be able to balance it out. Um, let's see. Any other any other points of observation? Okay. So the food that you eat quite literally becomes the the cells in your body. So you have to be very very conscious of the fact that if you're filling yourself with processed foods and with foods that have a lot of hormones in them and with genetically modified organisms, then all of those unnatural substances are going to be reincorporated in your body. Um, versus if you're eating things that have come from the ground, if you're eating, if you do choose to eat meat, um, if you make sure that that meat is uh, raised responsibly, if you can, uh, make sure that it's grass fed, make sure that it's not genetically modified, that way that you're, you're, you're taking in good things for your body. Now, obviously, the conundrum with that is that the foods that are typically healthier for us are also the foods that are more expensive. Um, and so that's a, that's a conversation that I'd like to have with you all um, at a later date. But we need to think about ways as a society that we can provide foods that are healthier for people um, at a lower cost. And maybe, you know, maybe some of you all live in parts of Charlotte where grocery stores are further away than the liquor store or grocery stores are further away than the gas station. And on top of that, the gas station or the McDonald's or the Chick-fil-A has food that is much cheaper than it would cost to, you know, buy vegetables to make your own your own meal at home. Um, and, and so it's there are trade offs. It's absolutely a trade off, but it's one that we need to kind of think through as a society, and especially you young people when um, your nutrition is such an important part of not only your physical health, but your mental health as well. All right, so at that point, I'm gonna go back to my Canvas page and show you what you should be working on. We've got about 17 minutes left in class. Um, there are two assignments here as well as an exit ticket. What I would ask you to focus on um, and to prioritize Number one is the, bio, the mo biomolecules practice. So that's just a short quiz that you should be able to knock out um, in, in five to 10 minutes. And then after that, you might consider doing the exit ticket, which is also very short. And then there's also the Amoeba Sisters activity. So you'll watch a video, and as you watch the video, you'll answer the questions that are associated with it. Okay, so um, you've got about, like I said, about a little over 15 minutes left in class. And you should be able to get at least two of these things done because they're, they're very short. Um, all of the due dates are going to be made to be September 1st. That's the last day of our unit. And if you're not able to do these things for one reason or another today, then you have until next Tuesday to do them. Um, but use your time wisely, people. And I'm going to remain on this call.
but I'm going to mute myself. And if you have any questions, you can obviously let me know. Wait, uh, what's more we got to do again? So if you look at your modules, are you able to see my screen? Yeah, yeah I see it. So you look at the module, we're in unit one now. And of course, this is day one. You should really have all four of these things done. Right? We started off with the warm up, we finish off with the exit ticket, and then these are the two assignments that you, you should have done for the day. Oh, uh, okay then. Yeah, those two. All right. All right then. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So you all work on those for the next 15 minutes. I'll be here on mute. Um, just let me know if you have any questions.
Okay, people, it's 120 now. So um, unless you have any questions for me, you are good to go. Uh, Kyrie, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but please stay and just talk with me for a few minutes as other people log off. Um, but yeah, you all should know what you need to go ahead and accomplish. Just those four assignments, the warm up, the exit ticket, the biomolecule practice, and the Amoeba Sisters um, video. Otherwise, I will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Bye, Mr. Rudd. See you, Jaden. Have a good day. All right, Mr. Rudd. I'm going to see you.
All right, Justin. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, can you introduce yourself? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm also going to stop recording. But can you just tell me how you pronounce your name?